So Moses, this whole story opens up. Moses marries himself a Cushite. Well, pastor, what's a Cushite? The ancient land of Cush in the Bible is our modern-day Ethiopia. So in case you're geographically challenged, you don't know where Ethiopia is, I have a photo of an Ethiopian woman. Can you put that up there for me? There she is. Nice looking girl, huh? Because how many of you know Moses picked them out a nice sweetie? I, I very much doubt <laughs> she had hair like that. <laughs> and I, I make a lot. I don't think so. All right, but this is his Cushite. Y'all with me? In other words, Moses married himself a woman of color. Mm. Miriam was upset about that and was yakking to her brother Aaron about their brother uh, and, and, and their new sister-in-law. She wasn't having it. I'm not having a black woman in my family. Oh, y'all quiet, but I'm going to go ahead and preach on anyhow. Listen. I didn't write the mail. I'm just delivering it, y'all. But because of her attitude, the Bible says in verse 9, the Lord's anger burned against Miriam and then says that the Lord had lift, left them and the cloud lifted from the camp. Listen, church, when the cloud lifted, Miriam the yacker was infected with leprosy and her skin turned white. It was like God was saying, hey, honey, you like white? I'll give you white. Uh. Her leprosy was like God manifesting her inward sin of racism in the form of leprosy for all to see. My God. God was stating this is what your sin looks like to me. It's ugly. And if you know anything about leprosy, it will continue to eat away at you until you die. I wonder if God exercised that type of judgment today. Would there be some leprous folks walking around in the church today? What would some folks look like because we're talking about an attitude of racism. Verse 15. The Bible says she was then commanded to be confined outside the camp for seven days. And the Bible says that the camp did not move until she returned. In other words, the camp wasn't moving until this plague of racism in her heart was dealt with. Hmm. So she was confined or quarantined because how many of you know the disease of leprosy is highly contagious? Oh, I just said something there, y'all. Oh, let me tell you something. The attitude of racism is highly contagious as well. I'm talking both sides, everybody. Racism is a communicable disease. The way the sin of racism is spread is not by sitting in a classroom. You don't take racism 101. Your parents don't sit you down, okay? Tonight's study is racism. Here's how you're a racist. Nobody sits you down and teaches. It's rather simply spread through osmosis. In other words, racism is caught, not taught. Every time those snide words go, th go through your lips and your children are hearing what you say. Every time you make the derogatory comment. How many know there's the Hittites, the Amorites, the Mayunites, Parasites, there's a new one that just came up. It's called the Media Knights. Oh, 
Yeah, some, some of y'all just getting that, right? Rest of you will get that by Wednesday. But they spread racism more than anybody. They fan the flame, fan the flame. Every time those words come from your mouth, you're riding in a car with your children. You're spreading this contagion. And that's why God said, put her out of the camp until there's repentance. Come on. Maybe we need to put some things outside our camp. Ah. Yeah. Maybe you need to put your television outside your camp. Maybe you need to put your iPhone, your iPad outside your camp. Listen to me, attitudes are infectious, good or bad. Secondly, the Bible says the Lord lifted from the camp. In other words, he removed his presence. This I can tell you. Where there are racist attitudes in leadership of a congregation, because remember, Miriam and Aaron were leaders in the Jewish congregation. Whenever there's racist attitudes in the leadership of a congregation, the presence of the Lord has lifted from the camp. He's nowhere to be found. I don't care how well you preach, how well you sing, how good your choir looks, how good you dance and shout when the attitude of racism has infected the leadership. I'm not talking about overt racism. I'm talking about the attitude of racism. The Spirit of God will not be found. He lifts from the camp. Listen, church, without unity, it's what we're talking about this morning. One Lord, one baptism, one faith, one God, one people. Without unity, baby, there is no anointing. Read Psalm 133. Without unity, there's no victory. Read 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Without unity, there's no evangelism. Read John chapter 17. Without his presence. That's why Moses said, listen, Lord, if you ain't going, I ain't going. Because if I should go on my own, who am I going to... But these attitudes of racism that are in people's heart make the Spirit of God depart because he's having none of it. Not in his house. That's why we read about the story of Samson. Samson, a great man of strength. Until the day he had his hair cut off. The Bible says Samson got up like every other day. Going through the motions, still strong. Didn't even realize that the Spirit of God had departed. That's where the word Ichabod comes from. The Spirit of the Lord has departed. I don't care how well it sounds. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it smells like. I don't care how it feels. Honey, let me tell you, if the Spirit of God isn't there working miracles and saving souls, honey, Ichabod is written on the door. Hi, I'm Pastor Michael Eurisha, and I hope you enjoyed today's short word. If you liked and agreed with this message, please hit the share button and share it with everyone you know. Together, we could proclaim this gospel of Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. And now, if you'd like to watch the message in its entirety, simply click on the link below. God bless you, my friend, and we hope to see you here next time as together we go beyond.
to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to every nation. Proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ.